Hi folks, this is the Mobile DevOps Showcase for February 2023. In this month's update, we're going to walk through how to create a CI-CD pipeline for an iOS application. This pipeline will build, sign, and release the application to test flight using GitLab and Fastlane. Before we get started, there's a few prerequisites you'll need to work through this demo. First of all, we'll need to have a developer account with Apple, so you can sign up for that at developer.apple.com. Next, you'll need access to the SAS Runner macOS beta on GitLab. Follow the instructions on this page to get access to the beta. And lastly, you'll need to have Ruby installed on your local machine in order to run Fastlane. We'll use this iOS application that I've created as a demo. Right now, there's just the basic files that have been created from an iOS app. And just so you know what we're working with, we've got, it's just a little photo randomizer app. So this will just change out the photo every time I click this button here. The first thing that I want to do is add a gem file and install Fastlane. I'll do a new file called gem file. And in here, I'm just going to give it a source, which is Ruby gems. And then I'm going to add the Fastlane gem. And then I'm going to run a uh, bundle install. So this is going to take a second to run, and this is going to go grab Fastlane and all of the uh, related dependencies for it. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to run a command called Fastlane init. So we'll do this. Uh, we'll run this as bundle exec Fastlane init. The first thing that it says is, what would you like to use Fastlane for? We want to distribute to test flight. So I'm going to hit number two. So I was able to log in successfully. And it shows here that the app identifier that I want to use, so com.gitlab.ios demo, is available in the developer portal and in App Store Connect. So everything is ready to go. We can go into our app and see what it did. There is a new folder called Fastlane, and it's created two files here, the app file and the fast file. So the app file is basically what configures everything about the application. This is the app identifier the Apple ID that it wants to use, and App Store Connect team ID, and then the developer portal team ID. Uh, so these are the configuration options that it needs to interact with the uh, Apple App Store. The fast file is where you define the actions that you want Fastlane to take for various steps in your pipeline. I'll explain how this works in a minute, but for now we can just see that the file was created. The next thing that we want to do is we want to configure our signing certificates. Fastlane has another component called Fastlane Match. Fastlane Match is the part of Fastlane that does all of the things related to signing certificates for iOS applications. We start this one up in a similar way. So we're going to say bundle exec Fastlane Match in it. And it's going to ask us some questions. First thing it's going to ask us is which storage mode do we want to use? And we want to use GitLab secure files. So we're going to hit four. And what is the project we want to use? This is going to be the project path in GitLab. I'll we'll just copy and paste. GitLab org, incubation engineering, mobile DevOps, demo projects, iOS demo. That's going to configure it for that specific project in GitLab. All right, so that's done. And now you can see we have another file over here called the match file, which is the GitLab project, the storage mode, and then the type, which is development by default. This is the different types of distribution you can, you can do through the Apple App Store. So you can say, I want to build for development or for the App Store or these other distribution mechanisms. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to have Fastlane generate our signing certificates and upload them to GitLab. What we need to do first for this is we need to generate an access token. This is so that Fastlane can interact with, with our GitLab project. What I want to do is create a project access token. And this access token will be just scoped to this project. I go into settings, access tokens. I'm going to call this one Vaseline match access token. And I'm going to give it maintainer access to the API. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set this in my console, export private token, and assign it to that value. What this is going to do is set this value in my environment so I don't have to set it with each command that I run. Since that's all set up now, we can go ahead and run Fastlane match. So we're going to say bundle exec Fastlane match. And what this is going to do is it's going to look at my application, connect to the Apple developer portal, 
and figure out what certificates I need to create for this application. What we've created now is signing certificates and provisioning profiles for this application for the development distribution mechanism. We can see this by going over into GitLab and going into CICD. And we can see secure files here. And now we can see that these files have been created. So we've got our development provisioning profile and the certificate. While we're here, we'll just go ahead and do this for, for the App Store distribution. So you've got a development distribution. And so this is how you would build and sign your app for testing. And then the App Store distribution is what you would use to sign your app for a test flight or for the App Store. So we're gonna run bundle exec fastlane match. Then we're gonna say App Store which is our distribution channel. This is gonna do a very similar process to generate the certificates and then upload them to GitLab. Okay, that's all done. So let's go back over to our GitLab project and we'll reload this page. And now we can see we've got our development certificates and then we have our App Store distribution certificates. Something to note, there is a limit to the number of certificates you can generate for a Apple developer account. So if you run into an error, what you might see here is that you've hit your limit on the number of certificates for development or distribution. There's a couple ways to get around that, and I'll link to that in the, the notes below in the video description. There's one final step that's needed to configure our application to use the signing certificates we just generated. Over in Xcode and in my project and under project targets, there's several tabs up here. There is a signing and capabilities tab. And when you click into here, you'll see this default option check to automatically manage signing from Xcode. We're going to go ahead and uncheck that. And then we will select our profiles for the debug and release distributions. Over in debug, we're going to hit match development. That's that certificate we just generated. And then in release, we'll do the same thing. We'll choose the match app store. And now that we've got this configured, we're all set with our signing certificates. The next thing that we want to do is configure our Apple App Store Connect integration in GitLab. So if we go over to our project, we'll see under the integrations tab, there is an Apple App Store Connect integration. We'll click on this, and there's a few inputs that we have here. What we need for this is going to require that we go over to App Store Connect. We'll go over to App Store Connect, and under the Users and Access section, we're going to generate a new key. So the way we do this is... Let's click that button here and we give it a name. So we're going to say iOS demo. And then our access level, we'll just say admin. And this will generate everything we need. If we go back over here, we'll see we need our issuer ID, our key ID, and then the private key. So our issuer ID is actually this value up here. So we can copy that and paste it in here. The key ID is going to be this field here that is just generated. So we'll copy that. And we can paste that into here. And then the, the key itself is actually this file here. So we'll download the key. And we can paste it in here. Right from this screen, we can hit test settings to make sure that this works. Make sure that we have everything configured correctly. We can see the connection was successful. We can go ahead and save this. And we know that our integration will work. Now that we have everything in place, we can go ahead and get our fast file set up. This is the file that was generated by Fastlane originally. We're going to drop in this file that I've got here, which I'll link to in the notes for this demo. There's two steps in here. There's two lanes. So we've got a build lane and a beta lane. The first action that we do here is set up CI. This is only going to be triggered when you're running in CI. So if you're in GitLab, it's going to set up a temporary keychain for the signing certificates. Then once we have that, we can go ahead and run Fastlane match. And what that's going to do is it's going to pull those certificates from GitLab, install them in the runner, and make them available for the build job. And then it's going to set it to read-only mode when we're in CI so that we don't accidentally overwrite the, the certificates. And then the last step here is just to build it. So it's going to build our app, and we can say the iOS demo project, the debug configuration, and the development export method. One thing that's kind of nice is we can test this locally. So we can go ahead and run bundle exec. Fastlane build. This will run all of the steps in this job. And if it completes successfully, then we know that the, uh, the build step works. That worked. And we can see that there is a demo IPA file here that it's created. Beta 
step is pretty similar. We're going to set up our CI, we're going to do match, except in this case, we're going to do the app store distribution. So this is going to pull a separate set of certificates so that we can use it in the app store. Then we're going to call this app store connect API key method. This is going to use that integration in GitLab to make the connection to the app store and get an API key for this session. And that allows us to do the rest of the steps that we need. The next step here is to increment the build number. Test flight requires a unique build number for each deployment. So we're going to do that. This is just a simple incrementer and um, you probably wouldn't want to use this for a production release or a app store release, but it works fine for test flight. Once we do that, then we can go ahead and build the app. Um, same thing as before, except for using release and app store here. And then finally, now that we've got that built, we can just upload it to test flight. And once we do that, the app will be uh, available in test flight and sent out to our testers. The last thing we need to do now is uh, hook this all up to GitLab. But let's go ahead and add a GitLab CI YAML file here. And we'll drop in some of this code that I've already written. What this is going to do is give us two stages in our build pipeline, a build and a beta stage. And in both cases, we're using this uh, Mac OS runner image. And there's different uh, versions available. But depending on what your application needs, you can choose a different version of Xcode. And then all we do in our script is bundle check. So this is going to do a bundle install. And that's going to get Fastlane and all those dependencies. And then we just run that command like we did before. Bundle exec, Fastlane build. And that will build the app. This tags here, this is uh, just something that's needed for the macOS shared runners. Same thing on the beta step. Uh, we're just setting up the runner. We're doing bundle install. And then we're running Fastlane beta. This is a manual step. And we only run this on master. So you can do all of your tests in an MR. Um, and then this will be a manual step that then gets run only master. We'll go ahead and commit all of this, upload it, and we'll kick off some pipelines. This pipeline, as I was showing earlier, has two steps, the build and the beta step. And the build job ran, and the beta has not yet run. We'll go ahead and kick off this beta step, and once that completes, we'll be able to see our release and test flight. Now the job has finished, and we can click into here and see that the job is run successfully and that our app has been successfully distributed to internal testers. What we can do from here now is jump over into App Store Connect. And if we go into our app and then into the test flight section, we can see this uh, the section on builds and, and testing groups. Uh, you can ignore these older builds that I have in here. The one that we just ran is build number seven. And you can see that it was sent to one test group. Uh, over here this is where you can control the groups that you send to. So. If you wanted to create another internal group, you could create one here. And then within the group, you can go ahead and choose the individuals that you want to send invites to. Once you've created a test group and added internal testers, uh, those folks will get emails asking them to accept the invite and then to install the test flight app on their phones. And once they have the test flight app installed on their phones, they'll be able to download the new versions of the app as they're released. So that's it. In about 15 minutes, we were able to create a CI pipeline that will build and release our mobile app to test flight. As you can see, there's still a lot of manual steps and manual configuration necessary. So the next things I wanna focus on are adding the automations to remove as much of the manual work as possible. That's all for today. I've added links to all the items I've covered in the video description below. Thanks for watching.